Hello everybody, my name is Agent M and welcome to another Minecraft video. In this episode I will show you the new commands in 1.13 or actually the snapshot 17w45b. And there is a lot that changed and you can see that when you open the command menu and you see this big black screen with text. And if you type help you can see all this <laughs> rubbish. It's still a work in progress but I will only show you a little concept or uh, some concepts and how to make those. So one of the big things that they added is execute store result. And this basically allows you to uh, store the result in an entity, for example, instead of a score. And you can actually store this into the MBT data of the entity. And this is where things get really, really cool. Because we can just select that sheep over there, type equals sheep limit equals one, and sort equals nearest because we want to target that one black sheep then we have the path and we can actually change the color by specifying color and that's a type byte and the scale is just going to be one i will explain this later what this all means you can just do 1.0 or just one and it will do run and for example say hi and it turns orange it turns orange that sheep just turned orange did you see that i said hi it turned orange. Let's try something else. Clear at the stone. All right, nothing happened. I'll do it again. And it turns white because there's no stone to remove. Grab um, two stone. And we'll clear the stone. That's pink or magenta. If we look at the wall colors, you can see this is zero, this is one, this is two. So those colors correspond. So if we take 12 stone, for example, like so, and we clear it, it turns brown. Because the 12th is brown wool. And it's, it's not only bound to clearing items, for example, it's basically the result of the command. And if you clear stone, if we have only one stone, it will um, result into one. And this will result into one. Then the the stuff before it says store the result of the entity, um, or store the result in the entity sheep, which is the closest one, into its color MBT tag, which is a byte tag. And to do well, whatever if, uh, result we get here times one. If we make this two, it turns magenta, as we can see, because the magenta here is number two. We cleared one stone one item but we did it um, times two because of the scale you can also do common numbers uh, like so so for example if we have uh, an entire stack of stone and we only want um, it to be for example 0.2 then this will be 6.4 and that will be rounded down so if we now clear the stone, we can see, or actually it's 12 point something. But then you can see it turns brown because 64, 64 times 0 0.2 is 12. Yes, because integer math. Um, but it's not only bound to a clear command, for example. You can do anything. You can also do give at piece stone. Um, the only thing is that it will always result into um, um, it will always result into one. So even if we get sixty four, it's still white. Um, there's other commands like scoreboard um, players get at p test, and I have zero test. But if I had different tests, let's put the scale back to one. And we do scoreboard players uh, add at p test one, and we check test. Um, hmm. There is some somewhere something is setting my test score to. Uh, anyway, um, I'll I'll make a new scoreboard. Objectives test two. 
add test to dummy or actually make it trigger test and we'll just do test two so it's now zero and scoreboard object is to the display sidebar test two um if now do trigger test two Oh, I have to enable it. Scoreboard, players enable, players enable, FP test 2. And let's just always on. All right. Now, if you trigger test 2, is it? Why don't you work? Trigger is enabled. That's weird. Oh, it's broken. Who cares? Scoreboard players add at p test to one. We'll do it the long way. Okay, now we expect um, this command to make it orange because the scoreboard get gets one. And if we now add like five to make it six, it's pink. Because if we look at wool, six wool is pink. And so that's one example. Now let's go to one of the examples I showed off in a previous day. And that's this thing. And we can just fly around in this area marked by the blue, green and red wool. To make these notes change based on position. If we move on this axis, that command or that node block will change. If we do this axis, that node block will change. And if we go over this axis, the y axis, that command uh, node block will change. And if we move in all directions, they will all change. And so Based on our positions x, y, and z, you can see our position change and the notebooks fire different things. And basically, this command log says execute store result block. Um, negative one, so that's basically in that direction. So we'll store the result in the block over there, and it will change the note tag. So if we quickly stop this thing, if we block data the position below us with data get block below us, we can see it has a note tag uh, without caps or whatever anything just note and powered and whatever and here we have this note and if we look in here again we can see note has a zero b which means a byte so we declare byte um int int assembly and we have one over here again it's the scale so we just want to have this result over here be scaled by doing it times one. And the scoreboard we're getting is players get at px. And x, x is bound to uh, another command. And so basically we get the x of the player. As you can see those x, y, z's change. Because somewhere in this world I have my x, y, and z bound using the following command, and it's basically just execute store score result score at p objective is x run data get at p or entity at p pause zero scale one 
And as you can see, the, the position 0 on agent M after scale factor 1 is minus 6, as you can see over there. And if we change our x direction and look again, we can see it's minus 13, because if we just take data get and t, um, yeah, data get entity, we can see a whole bunch of shit, and we find pause in here, we find 1d, 2d, 3d, 3 dimensions, x, y, z. This is just um, negative 12.558 blah 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 in a double, and scoreboards can only handle integers, so it will be immediately converted to an integer. And this is useful because sometimes you want to use integer, for example, for the notes. We don't want to use um, floats or doubles, and therefore I'm storing them in a a scoreboard first. It's nice for display as well. And as you can see, it's negative 12.5, which is translated to negative 13. We move a little bit to the to the back actually, and we run the command again, and we can see our position at x changed to negative 14.6, which is rounded down to negative 15. And as you can see, um, we can do that for the x direction over here with position zero, because this uh, is looking at pause. And then these square brackets mean Okay, look in pause, and we have a list of three items. The first is the zero item, then the first, and then the second. We always start at zero with computer data stuff. So if we take rotation, for example, it would have these square brackets, meaning this is a list of two items with the zero and the first element. And um, here for tags, we have the zero and the first element. And ender items has no elements, for example. And all those square brackets, they have elements, so inventory also has um, square brackets. So if we take pause, we have the zero and the first element. So if we take the first element and we store it in the y coordinate, you can see we store three there. And as you can see, it is indeed three. If we go up, it will be seven. And as you can see, the previous um, y was three, as I said. And that's the first position. Take pause two. Um, we expect to get negative 3 because it's already negative 3 and if we get the data of ourselves we can see negative 2.6 is rounded down or rounded up to or yeah rounded down to negative 3 it's actually just rounded to the closest uh, integer and because that's this first uh, zero first second element we define it as pos 2 Try pos 3, however, can't access element 3 because there is no element 3, so it's not 1, 2, 3, it's 0, 1, 2. 3 doesn't exist. If that makes um, sense <laughs> this far, then you can imagine how useful this is because now we can also take a rotation and we take the first um, element, which is the zeroth element, and we, for example, store it in x rotation i think x rot is a thing is let's see is this the x rotation negative 35 let me see okay this is stored completely differently at least the second one is correct the first one is yeah it's correct actually but it's reverse um scoreboard object is add Let's call this x rot dummy x rotation. And we'll do another one for y. And we'll do y rot. And now we can just um, uh, save that in our rotation. And we can see we stored that correctly in the rotation as 322. And we can store this in y rotation as 12. I have some fancy commands here to um, display them in position, so let's also add these here and call this x um, rot as the player name and x rot over here. And we can do the same for y rot and y rot. And it doesn't really matter, but those don't update because I don't have a command box set for that, but 
as you can see 322 has been set and 312 or 12 so if we do this again we can see it update we rotate a little bit more and we can see that change and if we automate that by putting that in the command block by just copying this stuff and pasting it over there and do the same for y rot and put that over here you can see if we move to 360 so this is zero and you can see x rotation going up that way and the y rotation going down and going up like that and so you can store all these nifty um, coordinates and um, rotation based things in the scoreboard and you can then modify and manipulate them really easily and that's pretty nice because now we can just basically um, do ray casting way better because we can also instead of putting this on the scoreboard we can do something even better and that's not the result uh sort of result in the score but store it in its entity and that entity will be as a target for example it e type equals let's do snowball limit equals one and we'll do no sorting i guess it's okay and then we'll store it into its hmm where do we want to store this motion i believe that might be a double scales one run data get entity via rotation zero one and this will now um actually that doesn't work <laughs> now you can't just put it in motion what we what we can do is put it in, into a zombie we'll we'll put it into a zombie because zombies are cool we'll sort it to be nearest rotation and then the first argument will be to our rotation so if now summon a zombie it will die we'll set it to night okay whatever so we'll set this on and nothing happens uh, entity or data get at entity at e type equals zombie limit equals one sort equals nearest gets tiring but okay okay it's zero why let me see Where is its rotation? 0, 0.0. Oh, it's in F. It's in floats. So it doesn't work on doubles. It's floats. So as you can see now, when I look this way, you will look that way. And if I do this, you will look that way. And as you can see, it will always follow my head. And that's nice. Um, I wonder what happens if I. Try go in him. Okay, I can't rotate my head, unfortunately. But as you can see, it will always um, it will always follow my head, and that's pretty nice, I guess. But I want to actually do something more interesting, and. I don't know if I can do this in some way. Now, now it will sort of follow my head, but it's not how it. I actually need to um, subtract. Hmm. 
How can you do subtraction with multiplications? Let's see if there's any If I can multiply it somehow with some number. Nah, I, don't, I can't think of the top of my head any solution to this. How to do multiplication or how to do subtraction with multiplication. Because if you take, for example, x and we multiply it by half of x. Then we will still, um, we still not have the right number. Um, x times x squared, maybe? No. There is just no way I can subtract, can I? Using just multiplication with a constant and a variable. Like, I, I, I can't do the maths right now. Definitely not in camera, it will take way too long and that's way too boring. So let's just move on to something else like... Is there any cool tags here I want to change? No, not really. Let's um, go and take a look at a different example and just scoreboard. Um, check this, set display sidebar. Get it out of the way. And let's just break our way through that. And let's take another... Um, Look at another example. Um, <laughs> I have so many command blocks here. So old, all those old commands. Look, look at these old commands. Say this. I mean, wow. Say a. Say is. Say a. I don't even know what I was doing here. These are all empty. And some weird stuff. Yeah. Cool. Um. Let's go here to the magic chest, okay? So let's um, clear our inventory real quick. And we crashed, so let's go back to here and let's try again. Clear and open this real quick. Let's um, put those in here. And voila. You can see the chest has exact same items as I have. Let's um, actually go behind this wall and not have the chest see us. So, well, let's just uh, hide ourselves real quick and just uh, change this to some peculiar numbers. Um, right, so it doesn't know what we did. Nobody knows. So, I wonder if he knows. And exactly the same. Hmm. If we go over here again, let's just um, secretly change this and let's actually just change this to all ones. Does it know? Does this chest know? And yes, it updated and it matched our result. And it knows exactly every single time. Even if we have a full stack of that and a half stack of that and maybe seven of that one. We go to the chest and it magically knows every time. It doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. And it's really easily um, done. And actually, I'll show you immediately how the trick works because if I do this, it doesn't match the item, only the count will match. So if I have 64 of that one, it will turn that into 64. And also the other way around, if I have. 32 over there, it will have 32 over there, but let's actually do something different. And actually put the gold over here, and it also works. Put it over here, and that's perfectly fine. I put that in the middle, and it will mess it up. And this is actually a little bit of a dumb way to do it, but it works if you keep um, your rules set. And... This is basically the command, execute offset 20, 56, negative 42, and it's basically just going to the chest. And then we will store the result of the block uh, on the chest in item 0 dot count. So it will go into the items, and take the first slot, 
or the zeroth slot basically, and change the count of that slot um, with one byte, um, or with with a byte, that, or that slot is a byte, and we'll change that with run data get entity at p distance five. So any player that is within a distance of five and whatever is the count of the first thing in their inventory, basically. We have the same over here for the first slot instead of the zero and the second. And it will also, uh, also just show that slot. So it will just match this slot with that one, this slot with that one, that slot with that one, because this is zero, one, two, zero, one, two. And it will copy the count of that to there. You can also do, uh, you can't do that the other way around because data merge at p or entity at p um, score or name test. You can't modify player data, unfortunately. So I can't also, I can't do um, inventory and then like something like ID, Minecraft, Stone, or whatever. I can't, I can't modify player data, unfortunately. And also something that we can't do is data merge entity at E type equals zombie. Only one player is allowed but the provided selector allows more than one. And so we can't um, do entity data on multiple things. Even to circumvent that, we'd have to do something like this, limit equals one, sort equals, or it's already randomly sorted. So we'll have to do something like this and then do the empty data like glowing, one B, and for tags purpose, We'll do tags, then we will merge it with um, glows, and then we will do something that doesn't have tag equals not glows. And this, we'll have to put that in a command block which runs forever, like so. And now if we summon a bunch of zombies, so let's actually get the zombie egg and just do that and if we run this command once it doesn't work type equals zombie and equals one tag does not close maybe the tag doesn't work yet so let's just do this still doesn't work sort equals random type equals zombie Oh, that works. Yeah, it works. Okay, cool. And now we have to do tag equals not close. And as you can see, another one gets triggered and we want to change them all. So we'll just copy this data. Do always active to repeat. And now it targets all the zombies. If now execute at at E type equals zombie, run summon zombie. Or as you can see, you can uh, summon a lot of zombies and slowly they will all be colored in. And as you can see, that is pretty slow. It's only one or tick. And we don't want that, for example. And we can speed it up actually by. Command. Yeah. And actually just copy a lot of them and that will speed it up a little bit and so kill at e type at e type equals zombie and kill the items and actually just summon a zombie right now and then execute at e type equals zombie runs summon zombie and as you can see, they will be quickly glow, uh, quickly um, filled in with glowing. And since it will only target uh, ones that aren't glowing, 
at some point this will all be glowing. As you can see the zombie is not glowing yet. But soon he will yeah, he will also glow. And that zombie isn't glowing, and now he is. And this one isn't glowing. If you give it enough time, um, it will start glowing, but unfortunately we can't just target them all and set them all to glowing. As you can see they started glowing as well. Kill all the zombies first and then the items. So that's also very slow and unfortunate that that doesn't exist anymore. But yeah, that's about everything I wanted to show off. Um, get you the basics. It might still change a little bit so I don't want to do a full tutorial on this. But um, as, as we get close to 1.13 I will do um, more tutorials on this and get a more in-depth look but you know kind of the gist and how to um, store data and so let's recap real, real quick what we did and that's basically execute store we can store the result of a certain command in either an entity by targeting, uh, targeting, targeting it like this limit equals one and type equals for example sheep we can specify the path, which is basically the MBT tag. Um, so if you take this sheep, for example, and actually we have to sort this to be nearest. <laughs> and data at e type equals or get at e type equals sheep. Um, sort equals nearest. Type equals or limit equals one. Entity. And if we look at it, we can see its color tag. That ba basically that tag is over here specified, and it's a byte, so we specify byte. And then the scale is basically to multiply this number by only one, or multiply the next number that's put in by one, basically. So we run a command, and we can take the data get. Uh, an entity type equals sheep um, or we can actually just do at s if we take execute at at e type equals sheep limit equals one sort equals nearest and that data get at s entity at s um, take its health for example health and then it's a float, or yeah, it doesn't matter in scale by one. And now, oh, it takes the scale of me. Hmm. Oh, I have to do as, of course. It's eight, and so we can just put this over in a repeating command block that's always active. And if we punch the sheep now, it will change color based on its health. And it turns to white, or it doesn't turn to white because we're too too strong for it. But oh no, white is actually zero. So if we take the wall colors real quick, we can take zero. We won't actually see that. Um up to eight. Like so. And let's just match these colors over here real quick. Actually, that is seven. And so if we now have a sheep, it will have colored or gray. And then we punch it once, it turns that color, it turns pink, and it turns green. Turns yellow, turns light blue, turns magenta, orange, and then it dies. Cruel, but pretty cool. Right? So we can just actually <laughs> do something like this. Punch it. And we punch it away from the color. Light blue, magenta, orange. And dead. And we can see that it executed with a scale of 8. Kill it. Or actually punch it and it turns into 7, close is 1, and it will turn into pink, it's, it's 6, 
and it basically stores that in its color. And that is why, um, unfortunately, you can only apply it to one. But we could also um, do this type sort equals random. And what that will do is actually, and this also random, will um, change the colors of both sheep to be quite random because it takes any random sheep in this world and changes it to that. So if we kill all sheep and kill all the items real quick. For example, we have two sheep, like so, we punch one. It will flicker between the two because it will take the health of one certain sheep and it will be randomized. And so we get all kinds of funky sheep with different colors. And as you can see, just punching sheep will uh, make them all rainbow colors and stuff. Which is kind of interesting. But yeah, that's uh, all I wanted to tell you is the execute store, which stores some um, data which is gone from a command into its MBT, and the data get, which um, takes the MBT data and store or and um, pushes it to the execute command. And there is so much you can do with this. This is just um, the bare minimum I've touched. You can also detonate TNT based on certain things, you can change the color of boats or whatever, probably. Um, you can even... Unfortunately, you can only change... Um, you can't get the name of a certain thing and turn it, um, put it somewhere else. You can only use um, number types like bytes, floats, doubles, longs, and integers. So we can't change the name of this um, attribute anymore. We can't change the name of the of the sheep itself. I don't know where it is, but you can only change uh, numbers. But that's also pretty cool. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed and kind of understood this and kind of get ideas and inspiration to figure out some cool things yourself and just. Um, you know, screw about with some certain things and settings and commands. And hopefully Mojang won't change it too much, so... Yeah, it's pretty cool.